Hi, this is Suzanne in Ohio. Well, I have a new toy and I just thought I'd like to share it with you. I splurged, I think, and bought myself a set of Ink Tense pencils from Derwent. They're made in England, Ink Tense. Now, they're called Ink Tense because the actual pigment in the pencil is ink. This is ink. It's a dried compressed ink right here. And so they do marvelous things. Um, the main thing is they're permanent. Uh, they can be used on paper or fabric and probably other surfaces too that I don't know about. But um, this is one tray in the set. It, there's two trays in this large set, 72 colors. And I can't show you the other one because my son is working on making me a color guide. So I have to be careful and not mess up these colors. He's got them all in order. But I wanted to show you so far what I've played around with. Now my original goal was to make some items, images, whatever, for uh, junk journals. But it can be used in any capacity like for quilts, um, fabric arts, paper arts, mixed media, um, collage, anything. So I'm going to move this aside and I'll just show you just straight away what I did. So I came up with some images to practice on. And the first thing I did was to just um, sketch out, you can see pencil, here, let's come down just a little closer because I don't know how good you can see that. I know my coloring is off. Let me turn this lamp off and see if it's any. Well, that's actually better. I moved the lamp away. So um, I just sketched these off of live pictures that I found on the Internet. And then um, I went over them with my Micron pen. I'll show you one. This what just happens to be the Zig brand a Micron pen. Uh, you could also use an ultra fine Sharpie uh, in black. So all I wanted to do was get the basic shape. And that's my pattern. So after I had my pattern, then I laid a piece of fabric over top of these and just drew my design. For instance, here's one. I copied the design. I just drew it with a pen, transferred it right on there. Now most of the time I can see right through the fabric, but if I can't, I have a light table that I can use, or you could do the old fashioned thing. Tape your fabric to a piece of paper and hold it up to the window sill or window and get some daylight shining through it. We all remember that from school. So I came up with these simple images just to practice on. And you can see I've got them transferred here to the fabric. So here's some that I did and I don't claim to be a painter but I'm telling you this stuff makes you look kinda good. So much easier to control than acrylics or watercolors. And they work in a unique way which I will show you in a minute. Now my whole little explanation here is not meant to take the place of a tutorial. There's a lot of wonderful tutorials on YouTube about using ink tents and that you should look some of them up if you're truly interested in them. I'm just here to show you what I've accomplished so far in my first day or day and a half of playing around with it. So I wanted to get familiar with how the pigment worked and the first thing I did was this and I hated it. Now I tried what all the uh, tutorials said and let me back up and say they tell you how to use this product. The number one thing is you put the pigment on the fabric and then you wet the fabric with either water which does not work good on fabric it would on paper or you dampen it with aloe vera, 100% aloe vera gel, or you can use fabric medium. So 
Okay, I grabbed the wrong bottle. This is white paint, which I use too, but fabric medium, I had some from years ago, so I tried both. The fabric medium adds more moisture to the fabric and the colors can puddle, bleed, whatever. Um, over here was aloe vera gel, wasn't wet enough. Some of that pigment on there is not activated yet. But that's my first fail. So I went on and the next thing I did was I got a little bit more serious and slowed down and um, I sketched this dragonfly just with a very fine micron pen, used very little pigment and then as I dampened it I used aloe vera gel on this one. Um, the colors come to life. So what it does is it melts the pigment and it brings them to life. I'm going to show you what happens, how that's done in just a minute. A little bird that I sketched and I cheated, I just, excuse me, I looked at one of um, Susan Winget's birds. This is her style artwork and I want to see if, if I could replicate that little cartoony look and it did fine. So these images tell me that I I can master this, at least enough to do what I want to do to make some um, fabric art pieces or journal insert pieces. So I'll move that out of the way. The next thing I tried was um, sketching a picture of a pine cone. And I didn't even finish this because I didn't like it. But you can see that um, I really have, I have a problem with contrast. I'm afraid to get too much paint in some places and not enough in others and I have this problem of leaving white area and all that so I admit my faults but um, I could try that again or finish this one and see if I could come up with anything but that pine cone for me was labor intensive so I don't know what I'll do with that but here's the ones I played around with and in each one I tried a little different technique so I put the pigment on there, then dampened it and realized there's no way that I left enough white space. So that's when I used the white paint, the acrylic paint, and went right over top and put my highlights. So <clears throat> this one was better. My contrast was just a little bit better. And maybe I should bring it down just a little bit. Whoops, sorry wrong way and I thought oh okay I can get the hang of this and you have to decide how much do you want um, how realistic do you want this like for instance this dragonfly is very soft not at all realistic but more cartoony whimsical and I better stay in that kind of vein because to try to get something a little bit more realistic, I would just, oh, I don't know if I can handle it. But anyways, two uh, crocuses and then a sprig of uh, wisteria, not wisteria, forsythia. And I did two of them trying different colors. This one's a little bit more yellow. This one ends up a little bit more gold, but you can see. And again, I had to go back over and put white on them for the highlights. Now this one, I haven't put any highlights on it yet. I did the background, of course the light sketch with this micron pen, and then adding the pigment and melting it. And there's several techniques you can use. You can put all your color down at once and wet the whole thing at once. Or you can do it layer by layer. And then once the fabric is damp with whichever medium you're using, uh, you can go back and put other color on top of it and that really gets intense. So this one needs some highlights which I will do before I turn it into anything. And you might be saying, well what are you going to do with that? Well I'll probably you know quilt around that and add some lace around the edges and make a little puffy and and then I'll lay it on the scanner and copy it and then I'll have a nice image for my uh, junk journal ephemera. So here's another crocus. I had to try a different color. I thought, man, can I really, I don't know, 
Um, some of these colors, they certainly don't look like what they are until you wet them. So it's an experiment. I wanted a, a bright pink, bright, almost hot pink, and you can see it didn't turn out that way at all, but nonetheless, it's okay. Again, I had to use white highlights. Uh, some sprigs of pussy willows, catkins, and this one um, required only one or two colors. Um, a gray I used and a brown, and then I put white back over top of it for the highlights. It's okay. I'm not an artist, but it's okay. It's, it's good whimsical art for what I want it to be. Um, and another tulip. I wanted this to be purple purple and you can see I chose the wrong pen out of the out of the box or the wrong pencil and then um, okay now am I going to remember the name of that um, is it do do drops one of the first things to come up in the spring and so because that blossom is white with some green in it, I literally painted the whole petal with white to get white because this is an off-white background. Okay, so those are my trials and my practices, and now you see how I did it. And I just wanted to show you what I've got ready here. A couple more birds, and all I did was sketch those out on paper, laid the fabric on top of it, and these are just denoting different color zones. Now, I don't know how this will turn out, but I am going to attempt to show you how these pencils work. And so we'll just, um, I'll put this one here so you can see. I have to put this on something because the dampness might go through. That is not good. Hold on just a second. It's a good thing scraps are at hand. So I'll lay this on here, this scrap, lay that there. And I am only going to use the colors in this tray that I brought over here because, like I said, my son is working on the rest of them and I don't, I don't want to mess up his job because he's doing me a favor by making that color chart for me. So I'm just going to, um, let's see. Blues, purples, reds, rust browns, golds are in this. Well, that's not great colors, but let's just try, um, we'll try a rusty brown. Now, see, it looks rusty, it looks rusty brown to me when I look at the lead, and the name is um, medium vermilion. So, it looks quite dull, but I'll bet you it's going to be quite intense. By the way, I already did one bird, and he was so bad I threw him away. But what I have done is I just simply lay the pencil down sideways and just add a little bit of pigment to the fabric. Not knowing, without my color chart, I don't know exactly what color I'm putting on here, but vermilion should be red reddish brown depending. Now you can layer these colors uh, if you know anything about art or m mixing your colors or mediums it can be done. My sister said well gosh if somebody wasn't a sketcher or didn't think they could draw coloring books would be a good source and you could get a coloring book with pictures you like and um, just lay your fabric down on top of it, get yourself some kind of an image. Another way you could do it is to um, use real photographs and enlarge them and then um, accent the shape with a dark pen and lay your fabric down on it and then you've got your shape and your design. Unless you're going for real realism, anything would work. Now you can see how little pigment I'm putting on here. 
So let's switch colors. Let's assume this is here it looks red or rust. Over here it looks brown. So, oh, it's anybody's guess what it really is. Let's try a gold one. Now see the end of this pencil looks gold, but the tip looks orange yellow. So who knows? We don't even know what kind of bird this is. So let's just try. Let's add some more pigment on here. And don't forget to leave your white spaces. Like me. Don't be like me and fill it all in. <laughs> I have a friend. Oh, she loves to do artwork and she loves to fill in everything. Because it's just so fun smearing that paint around. I know it. I just think it's terrific. Okay, so maybe I don't know if I have a gray here or not. But let me see if I can find something that could pass for gray. Here's, now that says peacock blue. Don't even look the same. So if you get a set of these, just plan on making yourself a chart. This is, look, look, this looks black on the end. And it's it says it's dark purple. So I'm not using that. Let's get over here into the... I'll just use a lighter shade of this one says golden yellow. Oh, who knows? Let's layer this one right over top of that vermilion that we had. And then we'll see what happens. The whole thing here is just to show you how the color melts and how it turns into what you want it to. So what I brought over, I'm not really set up for a tutorial or a lesson, but I'm doing the best I can right here in this little spot. So all I did was bring over a piece of wax paper and I'll squirt a little bit of um, aloe vera gel on, on that. And then, sorry I hit the camera. I'll show you the brushes that I use. My brushes are all old and well used. And for this process, course I picked my favorites and I'm not I'm not a paintbrush snub I'm not um, I don't have anything that was very expensive so I use them for whatever I want and I make sure I wash them out but what I found out was the stiffer acrylic brush brushes work better for this because you want to kind of slightly scrub that pigment or push that pigment into um, the paper. So I'm I'm feeling for the stiffest brush and this one probably is although it's a flat brush I can I can still work with it. Alright so here's where the magic happens. Let me push this where you can see it and let me get you down just a little bit closer. I hope my colors all right. I did other videos today and the sun kept going in and out and it was just awful. I think I've ruined one video. All right, so here's this pigment. Remember, it was three different colors, so I have no idea what color it's going to turn out. But I work the gel into my bristles because really it just wants to sit on top. And then I start adding it to the fabric. And if you watch close, you can see the brightness happen. And the ink comes alive. So let's do the tail. You can watch that happen. And I need more fluid here. More aloe vera gel. Which that's my choice. My fabric medium that I used was a watery kind. I know different companies make different ones and they all are slightly different but the one I just happen to have is quite watery so that's what caused the bleeding. Okay so what we've ended up with is some nice color tones and so this could be a warbler. Now it will even continue to melt over the next few minutes and before it dries, parts of it will become even more intense. 
but while the fabric is damp, I might want to add just some touches of something on the wingtips. And since I don't have the tray that has brown in it, I'll just try this so you can see. I'm laying my pencil sideways, and that fabric is damp, so it's going to take that pigment immediately. Look at that. And then I just want to put a touch over here on these wing tips. And then if you would want to get into shading, oh boy, this is, I don't know if I should try this, but an ever so light touch along the edge because that, that fabric is damp. So that ink is just going to come off of that pencil tip immediately. Now another thing you can do is hold your pencil over here and dampen the pencil tip with the aloe vera and you can see the pigment show up. So let's do that. Now I chose the purple one because purple is opposite yellow on the color wheel and therefore they kill each other so to speak and it makes for it makes for good shadows and actually when you mix two colors opposite each other on the color wheel you get a certain shade of brown so that's turning brown now I think it needs some shadow under here so let's get a little bit more purple and let's just put it right along the edge here very light light touch light touch I'm talking to myself and taper off. Now most birds have shadows on their um, breast or underside anyway so you can just add it wherever you want. Now here's the part back in here that needs some shadow and this scares me because I'm too heavy handed sometimes for this. I just want uh, more shadow back here where these two feathered wingtips meet each other and that needs to be a little darkened right there. And let's put some dark on the tail. Now, if you're not afraid to mark right on the fabric, go ahead. Otherwise, do this method over here where you're going to dampen it, just the pencil tip. So, after this yellow and this purple mixed together, your brain will interpret it as brown because purple and yellow will make a shade of brown. Okay? I'm a hairdresser by trade and color theory was something that came in super handy for me and I try never to quit learning. I certainly don't know everything there is to know. But some basic things. I know one thing, your brain interprets color different than it really is and color makes color look good and it causes that contrast. So let's just put some little swishes here to indicate feathers, nothing fancy. And let's get some right along here where the side feathers would come in. And don't fill in the light spot, Suzanne. <laughs> I'm talking to myself. And a little shadow under the eye. Okay, now that's enough. It's going to get darker as it sits. And it's plenty, it's got plenty of contrast. I might even go back with some white here or there. Um, I wouldn't dare drag this brush across the breast, even though I need a shade of brown there, but I don't have it. So I'm going to leave it alone. And I need brown for the branch. So later when I can get into that other tray of pencils, I, I'll add uh, some very light beige there and some brown to the beak and the um, branch. So there's my experiment. 
with Derwent Ink Tense Pencils and think of what you can do with that and the things that you could make for your uh, junk journals. Hey, all you artists out there and you wonderful YouTube people that are so generous to share all your talents and your ideas. Thank you very much. If you haven't subscribed to my channel and you like my style of artwork, just subscribe and you'll get a notice every time I put a new video up. And please go to my Etsy site and just to look at pictures for, uh, um, for art ideas, for creative ideas. Just go look at the close-ups. I do everything from paper arts to fabric arts. All right, hope you enjoyed this little video. Thank you very much for watching. Come back again.